I'm going to say it. I'm just going to say it. If your child attends a public school or a private religious school, the high school guidance counselor is not an expert college counselor. I know this to be true because every year there are hundreds, maybe thousands of students that have less than desirable choices and are left with no college choices by the end of senior year. That is not good enough. At a basic level, a guidance counselor should know enough about college admissions to be able to look at a student's list of colleges and the transcript and know if that student is likely to be admitted to even one college. And if the answer is no, have the courage to tell that student and make sure they have a better list. Our guest today went through the college admission process not once, not twice, but three times before getting her first acceptance letter. She first worked with her high school guidance counselor and later her community college counselor, neither of which gave her a path to success. This story of Cosette is why I do what I do. This is a must listen. Hello everyone, you're listening to Destination University, a podcast for college bound teens and the parents and mentors and educators who support them. If that is you, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. I'm your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon, TEDx speaker, college admission strategist and author of the book, be committed, get admitted. Welcome to Destination U University. Now, let's get started. There is no guarantee for success, but there are ways to get closer to it when you do the right things. Who you surround yourself with is just as important as what you do. Finding the right people, the right classes, the right activities, and taking the right tests are all decisions that shape your future. Find out more today on Destination University with Dr. Cynthia Colon. Dr. Colon and her guests will give you the tips you need, whether you're a student, parent, or educator. Now, here is your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon. Ah, oh, Cosette, what a treat to see you. I know, right? It's been so long. <laughs> I know, I know. I um, So those of you who are watching, if you're watching, uh, you can see us here. But if you're listening, uh, Cosette is, uh, as you're going to learn, she's an alumni camper from, from Dream College Academy. And most of the time we don't, she's from Maryland. So most of the time I don't meet students. We just have a Zoom relationship. But actually, Cosette is one of the ones that I actually got to meet when she was here in California. So that's been a long time. But it's a treat to see you, and thank you for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really, really great. And um, I always just love a good success story. So those of you who are listening, you're in for quite a treat. Cosette already has an interview with me um, that we did back when she was just learning about where she was admitted. So this is a fast forward and a, and a bit um, about her success story, but we're going to go back to where she started. So, all right. So let's just, you know, peel the bandaid off for everyone <laughs> listening. And uh, I know, I don't know if you, if this is always painful for you to, to, to t jog your memory to high school, but I do want you to be pretty explicit as to in high school, um, you went to a Catholic school. Do I have that right? You went to a Catholic school. Um, I don't think it was, I think it was co-ed. Mm -hmm. And what was your life like in high school? You were just going through thinking, you know, you're going to have a happy ending to high school. Tell us about that and senior year. So high school, I feel like everyone has this mentality in high school. And I know a bunch of kids in my grade had this mentality where like for the four years, the first two years didn't count, you know, like freshman year and sophomore year, you can like have fun, fool around and then like not focus on your grades. But then junior and senior year, it's like you've got to lock in and then like get everything together and like apply for colleges. So I, I live by that motto, <laughs> freshman and sophomore year. And then junior year, it came approaching and how um, they introduced like, okay, you got to apply for college and um, like here's your first steps, like you got to meet with a counselor. And then after that senior year is when we actually started applying and then meeting like with counselors. So junior year was kind of like an introduction. 
And then mm-hmm. senior year was more of like, okay, let's get it done. Like meet with your counselor one-on-one and then like discover, see what schools you want to apply to. So um, with that motto being said, so um, freshman and sophomore year, I really didn't focus a lot on perfecting or like thinking about college. And then junior year, I was thinking a little bit about it because I, for my grade sake, but then senior year, I was like, oh crap. Like I really have to focus on like what college I'm going to get into, like what college suits me. And I already had an idea of what I wanted, but then like, I realized that college is really hard to get into. <laughs> it's not just given to you. <laughs> and um, le- going through my counselor and like meeting with her, I met with her about like three times. Okay. One was mandatory mm-hmm. um, for all students. And then you had an option to continue meeting with your counselor. So the second time I met with my counselor was with my mom. And we kind of sat down and said like, okay, so um, this is what I did. Back in the day, I wanted to pursue opera. I wanted to do voice. Mm-hmm. And she said, okay, since like opera is kind of like athletes, right? So athletes kind of get full rides because they, they're they wanted and they give money to you. But um, opera will be the same thing, right? And I was like, okay. So then in my head, I was like, it's guaranteed. I'll get into school regardless of where I apply. So then I applied to the most prestigious, like, crazy town schools that I thought would accept me. Um, but in reality, it kind of went a little different. <laughs> so, cause that, uh, this is interesting. I don't think I know this part. So did you do like auditions or s- submit portfolios for your yeah. singing? Okay. So how many colleges, I don't know if you remember, how many did you apply to in senior year? Do you remember? I applied to ma- not a lot and they were mostly prestigious schools. So I, I think I applied to maybe six, seven, or eight in that range, six to eight. Okay. So I, I don't know if you did. Did you apply to like, to like Juilliard? That's just sort of what comes to my mind. No, it was like Stanford. Oh, <laughs> oh um, girl. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So you were thinking that because you had this talent, like an athlete, which I actually, I actually see what your counselor was sort of thinking or putting the, connecting the dots. Like, Oh, yeah. this is like a recruited athlete. So that's, you know, true. Like at NYU, I mean, if you get in through your portfolio, you know, and your talent, you're, you're going to get in most likely. So, okay. So you went for it because you were like, I'm talented in this yeah. other area. And so, I, so why wouldn't Stanford take me? Okay. Now I also happen to know that UC Santa Barbara was one of your dream schools and yep. you're from Maryland and, and you must've had a, a reason why you were tr- attracted to California. So you wanted some California schools, right? Yeah. I was from there. So I wanted to go back there eventually. So yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. Okay. So fast forward, April comes and were, you weren't admitted to any or like just one? None. None. Zero. Zero. Okay. So <laughs> you're past that, but at the time, do you remember how gut wrenching it was! Like, you were how devastated were you? It was terrible because I came from a really like one of the top schools in my area, and seeing everyone get into like UC San Diego, like USC, NYU, like whatever, and UMD, and it was really like shunned upon, like to go into a community college. It was like, especially since my like my high school was very like like they they give you a lot of resources and they expected you to move on to a four-year universities like if you were to go to a community college they automatically thought you were stupid which sounds terrible right so I felt really like oh my gosh I'm stupid (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what to do like now I have to go to a community college like I don't want to do that I don't want people to look at me differently that I'm going to community college because they really made community college be a terrible thing like coming mm. from like being in this culture in my school but in reality it really is not like that because I eventually did get to a community college um after me feeling like terrible and like worthless in a way like I cannot believe I did not get into anything especially with my voice I was like wow like I'm wow. different I'm unique I auditioned I even went in person to audition for like UC Santa Barbara and all this stuff so I was like wow like they saw me and I still didn't get it <laughs> So maybe looking back now, and again, I don't know all the colleges you applied to, but part of it was going to be your audition and your talent, which, you know, you you have, you know, good talent, but 
probably the other piece that you were not thinking about is like, well, what about my grades and my transcript and yeah. all of the other components of the application that didn't make uh, a, com a com full, complete compelling application. So, right, is that- Yeah, 100%, 100%, because okay. I remember I got into Santa Barbara's music program. They sent me a letter and they said, like, I got into the music program. And then when the UC application came back, they said, yeah, we can't accept you. So then that kind of dawned on me, like, okay, it's my grades, it's my essays, it's my application in general. It's not just my voice, even though I kind of took that to heart, like, ah. <laughs> I didn't make it with my voice because maybe they could have seen past the bad I didn't have terrible grades but like the low standard grades compared to like what UC offers <laughs> well, okay so I'm gonna uh, so I just love this candid conversation there, there are a lot of things I'm learning even for, for a first time today you guys so I didn't know all of this but if you can if you're listening and you're thinking okay you know well but athletes get in I, I'm gonna rest assured if you could think about the athletes that go to Stanford, I guarantee you <laughs> they have very few C's, if at all. Like yeah. every level of college is 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 able or has the luxury of recruiting a different kind of you know athlete. Yeah. So the athletes that go to Stanford, right? So what her counselor is saying that, oh, you know, you're talented like a like a top athlete, which may be true. Yeah. But you know, even that top athlete who can't really do school very well isn't likely to get into Stanford, right? So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, so fast forward. That part. <laughs> yeah, she failed to mention that part. Yes. <laughs> well, you know. Um, okay. So, and God bless the counselors out there, but also you were, pro I'm going to say, it. you don't have to say, it. you were ill advised. Someone should have seen your list of colleges and said to you, these are great. Everybody has a right to dream, but why don't we find five others that will ensure success? Okay, there, I said it, I'm letting it go, boom. All right, fast forward. <laughs> um, so then the following year, now you're in community college and then it's now time to apply for to transfer. So you do the transfer process, you know, six or eight months later, something like that. Right. And so just yes. tell us what happened. Peel the bandaid off. So I'm trying to actually think the timeline because this is before I was in community college when I met you. Yeah. Okay. So for this, I'm trying to think, I'm sorry. What was the question again? I'm sorry. Yeah. I so <laughs> did you, I, I think you applied one more round. I before, did. I did. Yeah. Before, before meeting okay. me. So you applied probably in your first year of community college, I'm guessing. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm remembering now. So for that one, I was doing just general studies because then I was like, okay, now I, I have to just knock those out in order to like focus on my last two years of college. I have to focus on my major, right? So I just did gen eds and I applied again to the UC. <laughs> I just wanted to get into the UC school <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I applied once again um, through that program and I did the same thing. I basically did the last time around, like in high school, I thought it was different because I was like, okay, I'm out of high school. Like you don't have to see like my SAT scores because that was a thing back then, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I was like, thank God they can see me as like just a community college student. Like I'm working hard. Like you can still see my past grades, but now like I've really improved like a lot than high school. But then again, when I applied, I got denied everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All yeah. this thing is the UC schools. The UC schools had beef with me. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. You did um, nothing, you know, wrong other than you knew you did what you, you thought you were supposed to do. Yeah. So again, devastation again. And I'm kind of fast forwarding for you because I also know that your mom was like, oh my God, I got to help my daughter. So yeah. there was this, something was happening or whatnot. So but and before you tell the story of how we we came to meet for Dream College Academy, just if you're listening and you're thinking that's me because that story is just like me, I will tell you that um, I when transfer students come to me um, privately or through camping uh, cam campers, um, I do say something very straightforward, which is this: you likely should wait until you've had a whole year of community college because 
when you're applying as a transfer student in the spring of your first year, you are basically, and, I'm, and I say, hate to say it this way, so my apologies, but you are basically applying as a ninth semester high school student. If nothing really, really immensely has changed about your application, you know, like involvement or leadership, or you went to, you know, you, you went to study on a mountain and just like reflect on like what life is all about, whatever, then really you are just applying as a ninth semester senior. So that you've got to really make sure, you, you got to make sure that you've done some, the, the work. Yeah. Okay. So it's now, and I remember we were launching probably somewhere, um, uh, I'm going to guess like May, we were doing Facebook ads and we were beta. This was our first cohort. We had just beta tested Dream College Academy. So your mom, I think, found me on Facebook. Okay. Right. Yeah. She found you on Facebook. And you guys came to the webinar. And what did you find in that, um, that class that was online that we were introducing? What did you like, what light bulb went off? It was so funny because I remember this like clear as day. Like we were in the, we were in the kitchen and my mom had a desk like near the kitchen table where she did stuff because she didn't want to be with my dad's office because it's a mess. So she had like her laptop there and she was listening and I was sitting on the kitchen table and at first I was a little hesitant. I was like, okay, like who's, who's really going to help me? Like I'm a lost cause. <laughs> and also, um, you really like your, your selling point was that like you were helping like high schooler. So I didn't know if I would fit in really well because I'm a transfer and my story is very different than high schoolers. I wish I found this in high school, <laughs> not when I was like 20 something, <laughs> but I remember I was sitting in my kitchen and my mom was listening and I was like kind of peeking in, trying to listen. And you mentioned, um, essays and I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, I think that was my biggest thing that I, like, I need help because I don't, I'm a good, I'm a good writer, but I feel like I didn't pinpoint what they wanted. And the UC school is like notoriously known for like these, five, like these beautiful essays. You got to write like five different essays. And like, after you write one essay, you get tired of like writing like the four other essays. So I feel like I had that. So when you mentioned like essays and you had like talking about like your coolness factor, I was like, I never heard of someone like saying coolness factor like what is my coolness factor and I'm thinking like I think I'm pretty cool so like what <laughs> what can I offer and I loved how you broke down like you had a really good portion of essays because you had sample essays and you had like photos mm -hmm. for the essays mm -hmm. and you said like yeah like so and so was like she is like a paleontologist and like she wrote an essay based on like her like her coolness factor was being like a paleontologist I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like that, that started to click to me. It makes sense. Like, okay, so when you write these essays, you can't just sit down and be like, oh, I'm gonna have to write like a college essay. Like, eh. like it's just like, it's hard. It really is hard. But then once you started saying like, what, like brag about yourself, like what makes you unique? And I was like, okay, I think I have stuff that I can offer that makes like me unique. And then I really love the webinar and my mom's like, okay, we're signing you up. Like, I don't care how much it costs. Like at this point, like, I just need to get you going. Like you need all the help you can get. <laughs> so then that's how I officially sign on to Dream College Academy. So our first cohort, I, it's all of them. I just look back now, my gosh, they were so successful. Um, but so there were about 30 of you. And so we had a kickoff party and then each week uh, we had guest speakers that aligned with whatever, whatever module, you know, whatever you were using. And so um, one of the weeks, in fact, you know, I think we did case studies, we did, you know, academics and all of these things, but one of the weeks was about coolness factor. The, the lesson was about resume and coolness factors and everything. So we uh, had a broad range of panelists. So I don't, I don't know if you had to, on the first day, okay, this is what I remember. Maybe you remember too. But on day one, we had a kickoff party with no guests, just kickoff party. Yeah. Some of you asked, and if you guys, if you're watching and listening, if you have the book, Cosette is actually one of the characters in the book. So she's in, in tale number one, where we talk about this kickoff party. And I called on just some people that were, you know, brave enough to, to answer. And I said, you know, what is your big, um, hairy, audacious goal? Like, what's your crazy goal? And Cosette said out loud that day in front of the other uh, cohort members, she said, I want to work for Disney. And at the time you wanted to be an animator and, and things like that. So, yeah. okay. So, I, so now thinking about it, what must it felt like when you saw the lineup for who was going to be on the guest panel? Like, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this question. Go ahead. 
Oh, like when you mentioned that someone from Disney was there, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like my chance. Like, this is like my chance <laughs> to get into that. Like, I really, really, really wanted to like show them what I could do and to like have that connection because like connections after taking Dream College Academy, I realized that like connections are so important in your life and like in resume building or anything. Like I, it's even crazier. I don't keep in contact with Anastasia, which I should have. I feel like I should even email her, but I do keep in contact with the contact that she gave me. Yes. And who was the um, recruiter for animation. Mm. And my mom even says like, please contact him. Like for my current like situation, like maybe he can get you a job at Disney, even if it's not an animation. I still love animation. I would love to continue that like as a hobby, with, like my real job funding that because it, it can be expensive, but I would love to contact him again. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you guys, um, did, so there was a, a woman who works for Disney there and I knew, I know her cause she was a, she's a former student of mine from, from uh, the private school I worked at. And I think you raised your hand at the end and ha- asked a question, right? Yeah. And I don't know if we had strategically like thought through this through, or you just knew that when it was t- came time. So you, it came time and you basically kind of put yourself out there and then I think I asked her on your behalf if it was okay if I shared her you know email because I didn't want to give it to you just like that yeah and she and she said sure I think she said sure I'm saying this not to you but also to those of you who are listening I'm sure that she said yes to my request because you went out of your way to raise your hand and you were that courageous leader to say, this is, hi, this is what I'm doing. This is that and my dream is to whatever you said, I can't remember, but, and then your connection with her, she put you in touch with someone in the animation department who yeah. you still keep in touch with. Yes. So, I mean, if you didn't DCA for no other reason, I mean, gosh, <laughs> that, that, that alone was, a, that was enough. It was amazing. It was like, it was just, everything fell into place. So I was like, especially during COVID, because it, yeah, we, we were we were bored, and I found this like newfound love for animation, and I was animating the genie because mm-hmm. that was like a viral thing. Everyone was doing the dance, like friend like me, and like the new movie came out, and I was like, I want to animate this. I remember I was driving myself insane, but there was nothing else for me to do <laughs> during COVID, and I was like, wow, what are the odds that I told her that I wanted to work at Disney and I'm doing something Disney related with animation. And then that led to my connection with her to then lead the connection with the guy from Disney who's the, like the recruiter for animation. And I was like, wow, it's just so crazy how everything works out. <laughs> okay, so let's just be practical. I want you to give some practical, like uh, the your perspective of the course. So um, those of you who follow, you know that we talk a lot about the essay camp that we do, the boot camp in the summer. And I don't really often talk about Dream College Academy. It's it's actually our signature course because it has got seven modules. So it's a it's like the pre it's like the the prequel. It's like the full menu of things that you need to know for college admissions. And because that was part of um, cohort one. So can you just share and I'm, for my sake too, what what was it like? What's the experience like to go through module by module and watch those videos? How, what does it, what does it help you do, learn, empower? What does it do? I love that format actually, because you can take it in your own time and you don't have to like be with the teacher and then answer like raise questions and stuff and like work in real time. This is more like, okay, let me like knock this out. Like the first like episodes for like module one. And I know that it was like, module one had like each episode too. Like it was like a lot of a very lengthy, which I also, I loved because it really went into detail for each and everything. Like I believe module one was about like finding your colleges or like making a list of like safeties or like, or. Oh, um, that's I'm, module four. M- module one is all about like calculating your GPA because your GPA oh, yeah. is not like what you see in the transcript. It's not exactly. So the, all the AQs, all the academic stuff is in module one, but it, there is one about college majors and making your list, which is also very lengthy. Mm-hmm. I I loved how everything was in order of how you would apply to an application. Mm-hmm. Like first it's like your, G, yeah, like your GPA. That was a godsend for me too, because I was like, I never knew any of this, <laughs> any of this. <laughs> no one told me that the UC systems had a separate calculated GPA 
other than mine. And then when I did it, I was like, well, my, I, now I know why I didn't get into the UC schools because mine was way lower than what they required. <laughs> and it was good for me to know. And I loved um, the little worksheets too. It was very, um, mm. what, trying to find the word for it. Like uh, maybe immersive, like, okay. Like you could follow along and take notes and everything. I loved that. It was like having a little masterclass. And then I loved having the, after the end of like a module, you had the full meeting, like the actual masterclass with, with people, like the guest speakers and everything. I loved that because they all tied in together. So it was very well done from start, like from start of one module to the end of a module with everything tied together with like the full in-person well, over Zoom. Ooh, that's great. Yeah. You know, actually um, we do have it now where you can just um, DIY it, like you said, you know, do it on your own and, and do you know, watch the videos, <clears throat> but we do now also have the live component. So for people who want the, sort of the VIP experience, I guess, so to speak. Um, and I can't tell you how many people love that portion, right? Like you get a lot out of, obviously a lot of value. And oh, by the way, if you're like Cosette and you don't know how to calculate your GPA or, or why it matters or why it's different for the UCs versus private colleges, all of those things, you're not alone. <laughs> this is a process that no one teaches you or tells you what to expect at all. So that's why we've broken it down into our signature class. But um, I, I can't tell you the parents love um, the, the live guests. They, they love the live guests because we would have um, sometimes guests not in college admissions, but most of the time they were college admission folks um, who do this for a living and represented, you know, different colleges. So it's also meant to introduce our students, our cohort members to a wide range of colleges that maybe they've never heard of because most students can name like 10, right? The ones that we all know and you're all applying to, like you said, you apply to Stanford, you know, of course, <laughs> but we, you know, try to introduce you to some, some others. So, okay. So after taking DCA, and then mind you, Cosette did not enroll in SA camp to, to sort of yeah. further that. What is available to you in Dream College Academy, just in module, the, the SA module, is enough to get you moving and started and get you to where you need to be. If you are diligent, like she was, about following, I mean, I tell you everything step by step. So you apply again. Now, I, I imagine you had to have been nervous. Because now it's their third time to bat, so to speak. Yeah. You're like, okay, here I go. I'm going to get up to bat again. And, and I'm sure your mom was nervous too. So um, by the time we interviewed you, um, you had been admitted to your dream college, UC Santa Barbara, and you had been admitted to Chapman and some others, right? Yeah. And you were waiting to hear from the last um, the last one, I think was, that was coming. So- Anyway, tell us, just tell us how it felt. I mean, in that year, in that last bit um, to finally get up to bat for the third time and, and finally hit it out of the park. What was that like? It was, it was nerve wracking at first because I was like, I feel like they have a, they look at my application like, oh, this girl again, like <laughs> this is the third time she's doing this application that was like in my heart like I know they're gonna recognize me even though there's a bunch of people you know but still um but besides that I remember I was like okay this is my last chance I feel I felt really prepared very prepared through everything yeah and I was like I'm gonna like knock it out of the ballpark like my essays were fire <laughs> they were amazing and uh, <laughs> and even my I I remember taking something, I forgot which part was the module, but it was like building your, like your act, extracurricular activities. I even went further into my community college. I joined the honors program. So I knew it was like, okay, I have like the honors program. So on my, on my transcript, it says like, whatever, like the, the thing, the, the insignia or whatever. So I was like, okay, if they were to push me away, I think they're crazy because I feel <laughs> like I'm just so prepared. I feel like I'm pumped. I was a little pumped, but also nervous. Like, through that process because it's a long time to wait for these like these results which is terrible but I remember I the UC schools was like I wanted to get into UC school I remember actually this is like a little side note but I kind of got in a little argument with a counselor at my community college because she said like you're not prepared to go into UC school she kept saying you're not prepared you're not prepared you're not going to do it 
And I said, I told her, I said, like, I'm getting in there. Like, regardless, I'll get into the UC schools. I know I will. And I can. So I had that little, like, spite in me, <laughs> like, applying wow. to UC Santa Barbara. That was, like, my dream school. I loved that school. I loved the campus. It was gorgeous. Um, and then I also applied to oh, UCLA. I got denied three times from that school. <laughs> um, and then I applied to, last minute, I applied to UC Berkeley. And I applied to UC Berkeley in a way where I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get into Berkeley. Like Berkeley is just Berkeley. It's it's very close to Stanford, like a little bit lower. But I'm like, I know I'm not going to get into school. But I just did like, you know, who knows? So I just said, I just applied to it. And then I applied to Chapman, applied to San Jose State. Um, I think that was it. I only applied to a very small amount of schools, which was probably not a good thing. Because you should apply to a lot. But I was really tired. Anyway. <laughs> um at the very end I waited and I got my acceptance letter for UC Santa Barbara I was floored I was so shocked I was like oh my gosh like if younger Cosette could see me now she'd be like I'm so proud of you like I can't <laughs> I can't believe we didn't get in but I'm glad we eventually did and then I got accepted to Chapman which I believe I did on my first time around for call for <laughs> applying for community college I believe I did get into Chapman so and then I got I did not get into UCLA oh and USC I did not get in and then I got into UC Berkeley and that was when I was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Berkeley and my mom was crying <laughs> she was like oh my god she, UC Santa Barbara like it's a great school but then if you look at like the stats and like the acceptance rate, it was really impressive to see that I got into such a small acceptance rate with Berkeley. Because I think Berkeley is like 14% and you Santa Barbara, I think it's 30 something. So it was real. I was super shocked. I was very impressed with myself that I could do that. And I had to thank you. <laughs> I was like, I could not have done that without Dr. C. And it's, it, it's in like the results because I tried two times. And then I really was down and I felt like I couldn't do anything. And then I found you and then all magically I got into Berkeley and Santa Barbara. And I was like, it has to be Dr. C. She really did something for me. <laughs> well, the system, not, I mean, the system that we created, but what I also just heard you say without saying it exactly is, is, you know, you, you had that little conversation with the counselor, I guess, at the community college, Yeah. but you were like, Oh girl, I am getting in. Like you had a, you know, yeah. sort of a, um, you know, a swagger, a confidence. And is that what, am I, am I right? Like Dream College Academy, fill in the blank. Dream College Academy gave me what? It gave me a lot of confidence. It gave me all the tools that I didn't think I needed. And I feel like it, like hearing that, it's like what they say, like when someone tells you you're not going to do it, then you want to do it more just to prove them wrong. And that's where I was like, I always knew I wanted to go to UC, like any UC school. But then when I heard that, I was like, I am getting into a UC school, like just because you said that, because I feel like I'm worthy of it. Yes. And yes. especially with counselors, like, because I've had my fair share of counselors, like my high school counselor and then my community college counselor. What's the thing is about counselors is that for community colleges specifically is they're really, they hone their skill and only where they are. Like they only know about Maryland. I'm from Maryland. So they, she only knew about UMD. And I was, that was really frustrating to me because I was like, I want to get into U USC or like UC Santa Barbara. And she was like, you sure you don't want to go to Maryland? I'm like, why are you pushing me to Maryland? Like Maryland's a great school. And I know that's where your expertise lie. Like, you know, Maryland, like my, my community college had a transfer guaranteed. It's just like, the community colleges in California, they have a transfer guarantee to UC school. They had it for Maryland. And I was like, okay, that's great. Like I'm not undermining Maryland at all. I'm just, I just would love to go to a UC school. And, right. but they couldn't give me what I needed, anything. It was like, okay, I can give you for Towson, another, like a small school in Maryland or Maryland or like UMBC University of like Baltimore. But I was like, I don't want that. I want this. <laughs> yeah. That was hard. Well, Bravo to you and your mom for continuing to search and find the answers that you needed. 
and that you deserved because like we said, like most of the time, those answers, uh, first of all, you don't even know what answers you need when you're in high school. Second of all, even when you get them, you described what it happens at most every high school, junior year, second, typically second semester junior years when they start rolling out the information for college. But if you have squandered freshman, sophomore year for whatever reason, it's too late to fix that. Yeah. So the answers that you get uh, uh, are often too late. So, which is again, why we created Dream College Academy. Oh my God. How's that? What a treat. I mean, um, so I'm wearing the shirt. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, you can see I'm wearing the Berkeley shirt. Um, those of you who are listening, I'm just telling you, uh, because in the end she did get into her dream college and then, except until she knew that she had a different dream college, apparently. <laughs> um, so uh, you just recently graduated and you just landed your first job yeah. and um, we're working together still. Uh, you're going to be working together to have a new and improved uh, website, hopefully all ready to go by this time next year when we're launching yet another cohort of Dream College Academy. So Cosette, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. So, so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this journey. I feel like I would not have gotten that far without you and all like the irreplaceable information that you have, especially being like an admissions counselor. That's what really sold me was that and my mom that you were an admissions counselor in the past and you had experience with reading college essay, the college essays and you knew what to pick and what to make it pop out and unique after reading like a bajillion of these things. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but that I remember <laughs> I remember I told my mom, I said, like, if I've only met Dr. C in high school, I would have gone to Harvard. I'm just saying now. I oh, gone. hey now. Um, <laughs> put, put it on the vision board. It's never too late. You can still go back to school. Oh my God. I love this so much. I love this so much. And and um Cosette, uh, her essays are in a, one of our packets that we do have um, that you get. I think I think it comes in Dream College Academy. So anyway, you guys can see all of that. I'll pop that into the show notes. Um, but uh, thank you so much for spending time. I know you have to go to an, your next meeting because, you know, that's how our students roll, our alumni. They're, they're busy. They're, you know, successful and they're moving on. So anyway, all right, Cosette, let's just wave goodbye. Thank you so much. Everyone, wherever you are, I mean, have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Oh, my word. Do you see what I mean? Sat is just like any other student. She just needed some help. Okay, my friends, here is the truth. Every student deserves to have a high school happy ending. The problem is many students don't know what that looks like or how to get there. Without a nudge from the counselor, a push from a hard teacher, or an encouragement from a coach, Students left, are left feeling discouraged and unmotivated. DCA gives you the answers and expert college guidance your family deserves all in one place so that your child it can easily and confidently apply to dream colleges, never having to worry if they are behind or doing enough. The end product is a strategic academic and leadership plan paired with actionable to-dos, which leads to a confident student compelling application, and the happy ending they deserve. Whew. All right, that is all I have for you today, my friends. Thank you for tuning in to Destination U University. I'm Dr. Cynthia Colon, your happy success, success expert. <laughs> if this episode has in any way helped, fueled, or inspired you, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. You can subscribe to Destination U University wherever you get your podcast. And while you're there, please leave us a review. It sure does help a lot. And if you haven't binge listened to our previous seasons, do it. <laughs> if you have an eighth grader or a high school student, dive right in and take every possible piece of advice you can. Start with episode one where I interview my mother. You will love her. I'll be sure to see you next week, same time, same place. Until then, wherever you are, may you have a happy and sunny day. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening this week to Destination University. Be sure to join Dr. Cynthia Colon again and get one step closer to your success. 